Hey everybody, it's your Peacekeeper coming at you with another video in our How To Play series of the U.S. Battleship line. This is the Tier 9 USS Iowa, or the Iowa class of battleships. This is, by far, my favorite class of battleships in the game. It's also my favorite class of battleships in real life. The reason why, we'll cover in a little bit. The Iowa class of battleships had four ships that were built and six planned. The four ships that were built were the Iowa, the New Jersey, Missouri, and Wisconsin. All four of those ships serve extensively in the Pacific Theater in World War II, and all four of them can be viewed as museums today in various locations around the United States. The two that were planned, the Kentucky and the Illinois, that's BB-65 and BB-66, were originally built as Montana class battleships but when we determined that a new class of battleships wasn't necessary because we were focusing on the production of carriers they decided to reorder them as Iowa class battleships the Kentucky went even as far as laying down the keel and building the hole up all the way until the deck line all the way up until the top of the barbettes there was no superstructure, no armament, none of the expensive, extensive electronics that we see in the complete battleship. Basically, it was the hull, minus the guns, minus the superstructure. It floated around in harbor for the better part of 10 years before it was finally scrapped. And actually, part of her the Kentucky was used to repair the Wisconsin when the Wisconsin ran into another ship. But it sat in its berth and its construction housing for basically the whole war. Cool fact. This class of battleship, and the reason why it's my favorite, is because it has just refused to die in the minds of the American people. It is so iconic. You know, the Missouri is where the signing, the, the Japanese surrender was performed. All four of these ships served in some capacity in Korea, in Vietnam, in the Gulf War. Never mind their service in World War II. They've undergone dozens of refits, changing out all sorts of things on the ship, from radars to guns to adding radars to changing out anti-aircraft mounts to even adding cruise missiles and anti-ship missiles and anti-aircraft missiles. All of that was done on one class of ship designed in the 1930s and built in the 1940s for a war which at the time was being revolutionized by the invention of the aircraft carrier. How awesome is it that a ship from the 1940s managed to survive in the aircraft carrier era for 50 plus years. That is just cool. There is no other feeling in the world than knowing that something that's that old was basically still in service six years ago. That's crazy. That is legitimately crazy. Now, obviously, after the Gulf War, they didn't remain in active service. They were put on inactive duty. Uh, most of them were loaned out as museum ships all the way up until the Wisconsin and the Missouri were finally stricken from the uh, Naval Registry and turned over to their respective museums for permanent museum duty. That's just cool. I like that. But let's go and let's talk about it in-game. In-game... We got 79,000 hit points. That's pretty good for a tier 9 battleship. Armor-wise, in real life, the Iowa class of battleships armor scheme it was basically unchanged from the South Dakota class of battleships. You have 13.1 inches of belt armor sloped at 19 degrees. You've got thick bulkheads. You've got thick turret faces. It's a very durable design. Until we start to factor in the changes in shell types. At the time of the design of the South Dakota class, at the time of the design of the North Carolina class, we were shooting the Mark V AP shell. That shell 
was originally what was intended to be shot out of the Iowa class of battleships. So the armor scheme was at the time intended to be what they would call balanced design. Basically, the Iowa class, if it would have shot the Mark V AP shell, would have had a sufficient immunity zone against itself that nothing else that shot that shell or something similar to it would do some significant damage between those ranges. What ended up happening was the Mark VIII Super Heavy shell came out and turned this ship completely up on its head. During the design and, and construction of these ships, it was determined that this ship would basically only use the Mark VIII Super Heavy shell because they were having such good luck with it in testing all of the U.S. battleships that could carry it would. This meant that the North Carolinas, the South Dakotas, and the Iowas were all required to turn in all their old Mark V rounds and replace them with the Mark VIII rounds. Because the Iowa class was still in production at the time of this switch, there was the opportunity to change that armor scheme. In order to do so, they would have had to have added enough width, length, and weight to the ship that the designers felt that it would unnecessarily slow down the ships. In doing so, we no longer have what would be called a balanced armor scheme, and that means that this ship basically has no immunity zone against its own shells, which is kind of a crazy concept. But when you factor in the maneuverability and speed of the ship, it had its own defense in, a, in an entirely different way. It was the avoid take getting hits rather than just sit there and take the hits. <clears throat> On to our main batteries. The main batteries are 16-inch, 50-caliber Mark VII guns mounted in three turrets, two forward, one aft, in triple-gun turrets. <clears throat> they have a maximum range of 23.3 kilometers and a dispersion of 293 meters. That's pretty good for a Tier 9 battleship to be shooting 23.3 kilometers and landing in 300 meters. That's pretty good. Your secondary armament consists of the U.S. standard after the invention of the fast battleship. 5-inch, 38 caliber dual-purpose gun mounts, 5 on each side, 10 total barrels on each side. Going back to our Mark 8 Super Heavy Shell for a moment. I think, and this is just my opinion and my observed opinion of the state of the Mark 8 and U.S. battleships. I think it is underperforming right now. In terms of penetration values, it just seems oddly convenient that the Yamato class battleships have a very large immunity zone against this shell. I posted about it on the forums. At 18 kilometers, the Mark 8 Super Heavy shell coming out of these guns would have enough to penetrate the belt armor on the Yamato reliably, consistently, and often. In game, they do not. In fact, you don't start reliably getting citadels on a Yamato until about 12 kilometers, and that's if he's showing his perfect broadside to you. In real life, at 12 kilometers, this thing would turn a Yamato into Swiss cheese. Granted, the Yamato would be returning the favor from a lot longer distance. <clears throat> that, to me, is a little frustrating, and that plays into the dynamics between the Montana and the Yamato. That's something we're going to cover in the Montana video, so I won't harp on it too much. But just know, in terms of armor penetrating capabilities, while you can get a lot of Citadels with these guns, do not expect very many of them on the... Uh, Yamato class of battleships unless it is exposing a perfect broadside to you at basically close range. <clears throat> it's unfortunate that that's what Wargaming chose, but at any rate. As we all know, the 5-inch Mark 38 dual-purpose mounts also serve as a part of your anti-aircraft suite. Here's the list of the anti-aircraft suite. I am not going to go over it because it is a very long list, but I do want to point out one thing. During the closed beta, Wargaming nerfed the anti-aircraft of the Iowa class of battleship. Why? Why is they did it is because at the time, the only aircraft carriers in the game stopped at Tier 8. This is a Tier 9 battleship. The anti-aircraft was literally melting 
aircraft at that tier, especially if you spec into the anti-aircraft spec for your captain and your upgrades. So they decided to tone it back. Well, at the same time, they also released the Tier 9 and Tier 10 aircraft carriers, and huh, it's been nerfed. They also did that to North Carolina. How it's been nerfed is quite simple. The real-life Iowa class of battleship has these quad Bofors mounts in every single 40 millimeter mount on the ship. In this game, we only get four. Two forward, two aft. Every other location for the 40 millimeters in real life would all be quad mounts. And closed beta before the nerf, that's exactly what it was. Now we've just got the dual mounts. That's not to say that the Iowa class still does not have fantastic anti-aircraft. In fact, it is really one of the best anti-aircraft ships in the game. Everybody talks about the Cleveland being the absolute wrecker of all things anti-aircraft. The Baltimore, that's another one that gets a good reputation for it. This ship will do as good as, if not better, at shooting down aircraft than either one of those two ships will in their tier because it has so much anti-aircraft capability. And when you spec into it with your captain skills, your anti-aircraft circle starts at 7.2 kilometers and it just keeps getting more ridiculous as you get closer to the ship. So it's still very good. Max speed, 30 and a half knots. But wait, Peacekeeper, the real life one could go 33 knots. Well, 33 knots was intended to be a designed max speed for this class of ship. The actual observed speed under full combat loads in combat conditions was about 30 and a half knots. That's why Wargaming decided to choose that number. Personally, I think 33 knots would satisfy us fanboys a little bit better. It would also give the ship a little bit more utility and allow it to get out of situations a lot easier. But you won't find yourself at 30 knots plus for very long in this game anyway. And the reason for that is because all these engagements happen over such long distance. 23.3 kilometers on the largest map is still over a third of the distance of the map. So it doesn't take long for you to get involved in firefights. And when you're in firefights, you're constantly changing directions. At least I hope you're constantly changing directions. Therefore, you're never at 30 and a half knots. In real life, in the 1980s, the Iowa class battleships during their refits and their retesting for seaworthiness actually achieved a top speed of 35 knots unladen, meaning no ammo, minimal crew, minimal fuel, 35 knots. Supposedly, in the one source that I was reading, this back section of the ship actually went underwater because of the way the hydrodynamics of the hull pulled the back end of the ship underwater. That's cool. That's a lot of power. Turning circle is 920 meters. It's not bad. It's not great. It, the ship does turn around reasonably well. I can't complain too much about that. Rudder shift, 13.6 seconds. That's very good. And, of course, the surface detectability stuff, which who cares? <clears throat> I do want to speak briefly about the holes, the hole upgrades. With each hole upgrade, you basically are adding survivability and you are adding anti-aircraft mounts. I have been asked time and time again if it's worth getting the final hole on the Iowa I will just say this right now, you're a fool not to. This thing melts tier 10 aircraft with the anti-aircraft spec for the captain skills and you're not giving up anything in the gunnery department. It is epic to watch this thing do work for anti-aircraft. Just absolutely epic. Okay, on to the upgrades. <clears throat> Main battery modification one has been a staple in the US battleship line from tier three all the way up till now. Not going to talk about it. AA gun modification 2 has been a staple since tier 5. Not going to talk about it. <clears throat> this is the new slot at tier 9 and tier 10. You have four different options. Gun fire control systems mod 2, which increases the main battery firing accuracy. This number, the observed change in dispersion from that 293 meter 
is only like 10 to 20 meters if I remember correctly it's not a huge change you can try it out if you want and see if it helps you me personally I'd rather have the AA guns mod 3 which I'll talk about in a minute main battery modification 3 this upgrade reduces the loading time and increases the time it takes for your turrets to traverse 180 degrees what that means is you will have a quicker reload I believe it jumps down to 25 seconds but your turrets turn slower so reload for slower turning turrets the nice thing about the North Carolina the Iowa and the Montana is the fact that you can be full over on the rudder and full flank and the guns will stay on target on the outside of a turn like it's nothing in fact you can actually change targets one at full rudder it, it it's absolutely amazing how well these ships can stay on target you can try this if you want my experience is that it slows them down enough that you lose that ability it's not as pronounced you have to let up on the rudder a little bit kind of gives you bad flashbacks to the Colorado and the, the New Mexico and the New York and Wyoming and South Carolina in that regard I personally don't care for this modification mainly because I prefer AA gun mod 3 <laughs> AA gun mod 3 increases your anti-aircraft effectiveness by 20 percent 20 percent that and combined with the captain skill turns this thing into just an absolute destroyer of all things aircraft like I said it's amazing to watch this thing destroy aircraft that's the reason why I choose this that basically makes them do more damage and the last one is secondary modification secondary battery modification 3 which reduces the loading time on your secondary battery you're not a Nagato you're not a, a Zumo and you're not a Yamato don't know why we would ever think about secondaries if you want to try it you're certainly welcome to personally I think it's a waste of a upgrade slot damage control mod one again staple not gonna talk about it <clears throat> damage uh, this one steering gears modification two it's been a staple not gonna talk about it the, well I take that back the only other one this might be an instance in which you might try propulsion modification two and the reason for that is a lot of the tier eight nine and ten battles are fought what I would call nose to nose oftentimes that's at a stop or going backwards it might be beneficial you can try it the couple times I've tried it and didn't like it so I stuck with my steering gear modification one that reduction in rudder shift time makes these things change directions and ways that carrier pilots absolutely hate last one I think I covered in the North Carolina video but you have two options basically 20% increase in your what you can see on the map or a 10% decrease in detectability you're a battleship you've got a massive detectability range you can't stealth fire I don't care for this modification it doesn't do you much for the cost really neither does the 20% increase in sight range I think it's a worthless modification it's a waste of two million credits the only reason it's on this ship is because I had one from my Arkansas beta that I pulled off when I bought the Iowa so that's the only reason that I would ever run that is if you had one laying around or you got money burning a hole in your pocket the battle video I'm not gonna do another battle video for this I have a great video already on my channel that you can watch I'll post a link to it on the screen just click on that and you can watch it it basically covers everything you need to know about the Iowa class it plays an awful lot like a faster more maneuverable and harder hitting North Carolina it does have a little bit better durability than the North Carolina it also has better anti-aircraft than the North Carolina which is saying a lot but at the end of the day it plays exactly the same don't show your broadsides because you have relatively no belt armor and you will get citadeled frequently and often and use your speed to move about the battlefield and influence the battle in whichever way benefits the team the most you don't have to be like the US standards and go in one a pick a direction and go there and sit there because well I don't have any speed to get back to a fight anywhere else so with that you 
you got a lot more utility in this than you even had in the North Carolina because of the speed and its maneuverability. Use all that to your advantage. Watch the battle video if you're interested in it. It's a great video. 212,000 damage, which is my third best battle ever. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm your Peacekeeper. Thanks for watching.